Okay, welcome back to the final video in this series, Tableau Prep for Excel users. Um, this is, uh, I'm just looking back at my notes here, I think this is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh video in the series, seventh and final video in the series as well. And so today what we're going to be doing is covering joins and unions in Tableau Prep. Now in Excel, joins might be more commonly known as VLOOKUPs, um, but fundamentally I'm going to stick to calling them what they actually are, because in the database world or if you're working with a team of data engineers this is the terminology they're going to be using and tableau prep uses the similar concept let's open up a sample flow and you'll have seen uh, in tableau prep that there are two types of tools that we have not yet covered in the video series and so we've left those till last um, if i click on this tool you'll see that this tool here is called the join tool okay and the tool just before it uh, looks very similar um, well it doesn't look similar at all but the interface looks slightly similar but it's called the union tool and you might have also noticed that if I was to uh, remove these two steps okay and remove this step as well and I was to maybe just uh, copy this step here and uh, paste it to the left and drop that there Whenever you drag a tool onto another tool, you always get three options. And that is the ability to add it, which draws a line between the two tools. But notice you also get this union and join options. Let me just zoom in again. There you can see it, union and join. And that's deliberately why I've left this particular feature until last, because it requires a little bit of explanation. I'm going to link in the description a really good blog post by Diego Parker from the Information Lab Data School, where he talks about when you should use joins and when you should use a union instead. And he actually has some visual examples here showing you the input files and the outcome that comes from that. So you can actually have a look at this and understand how the data um, works. So I highly encourage you to hop on out to that video and have a look at it. I'll go through something similar in Tableau Prep, but I just want to sort of call that out as a further reading that you can use to sort of enhance your understanding. Okay, so now I'm back in Tableau Prep. I'm going to go ahead and remove everything up until this final point. If I click on my clean step, the first thing to do, I'm going to create a scenario here where we have a need to union our data. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to add a step on the top, I'm going to move that up and I'm going to add another branch here at the bottom. So what this does is it creates a duplicate of our data. By adding that branch, we basically create two streams from one input. Okay, And what I'm going to do to make it easier to differentiate between the different columns, I'm going to just create a calculated field and I'm call this branch two. Okay, I'm not going to do anything more than that. And I'm going to call this branch. Okay. And it's safe. And I'm going to go to the top connection. And then I'm going to also create another field. I'm going to call the same column name. They're going to come together. And I'm going to call this branch one. Okay. And click save. Now, what's really interesting about unioning is in real terms, uh, the best way to think of it is if you take uh, Excel and you have uh, a data source that's been given to you where each tab represents a month, what you'd typically want to do if you wanted to do some aggregations is you'd want the data to all be in one tab. So you can very easily hit a particular column and aggregate using that column. Well, Union is almost a physical manifestation of exactly that. You are taking two tables or two views with similar columns, okay? Usually they normally have an identical column layout and you're simply putting one on top of the other. That's why the icon for it over here is exactly that. It's a little bit like Jenga. You're kind of stacking things on top of each other. So if I zoom back out, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag the second item here, the second uh, branch, on top of this particular uh, item. And you'll see you get that sort of hint again. And now this is the really sort of bit you have to be careful. I want to explicitly drop it on the union option here that's sort of uh, goes orange when I'm actually hovering above it. You can see that happening there like that. 
okay? I don't want to drop it on the join. I want to drop it on the union. And when I do that, Tableau will do two things. It will create a branch between these two and it will drop in the union step. And I'm just going to bring that here to the center to, to kind of please my OCD, okay? And the other thing you will notice is that each of these branches had a different color for the steps. And actually Tableau is pretty good at this. It will use a color consistently up until there's a meaningful change. So in this union step, if I look at my summary, any row where the header is orange is coming from this step. And any row where the header is uh, green is coming from this top step. So I can even see visually how much of my data is made up of the different proportions of my data. OK, and what I've basically done is I've just duplicated my data. I've basically put one on top of the other. Now, another thing Tableau will do is it will create a new column called table names. And this is basically just the name of the relevant files that basically uh, go into this flow. It's trying to create some sort of separator. But we actually created our own called branch. And you can see here, if I drag that into the left here, so it just comes into view. Uh, if I click branch two, you can see that that only refers to the second data set and branch one uh, refers to that top one. They both represent 50% of the data. That's why none of these charts are actually changing because it's exactly 50%. So the proportion is the same no matter what I click on. Okay, so that's a very simple example of a union. Now, let's go back to the second step. And I actually want to change this days to ship to something else. Let's say I had a typo. So I'll put D, I'll miss the A, Y, S to ship. Okay. So this is what I'll do. Okay. Now, when I change that, no error will come up. But if I go back into my union step, you'll see something new. There's this section here on the bottom left, which shows mismatched fields. These are essentially columns from the two data sets where Tableau Prep has not been able to find a matching column, okay? And what I can do is I can actually click on the first item, Days to Ship, and then click a plus on the second one to tell Tableau that these two are actually the same thing. Okay, and then Tableau will take that and merge them together. Now that's technically not a change in this in this sort of situation. It's essentially just creating a relationship between the two columns and then completing the step that it already knew about, which was the union. Okay, and that's pretty much how unions work. They're very very simple. And they're very very straightforward. Now, joins, on the other hand, are a little bit more complex and require a little bit more thought because depending on the outcome you want to achieve, you might need to do joins in a slightly different way. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to lean on the pre-built example that we already have in our flow over here on the left-hand side. And the reason I want to do this is just so I can walk you through the anatomy of a join and you can see how it works. And then we'll have a go setting one up ourselves a little later. Let's just drag this window up. Uh, I appreciate it's covering the flow entirely, but just uh, bear with me. The settings pane for the join tool is a little bit more involved because it has a lot of information to communicate. You also have this summary view like we've had for aggregate functions and uh, pivoting functions. It has that sort of similar two column setup that tells you a little bit about what's going on. And then you have your summary view yet again. Now, the thing to note here is just like the union tool, it's going to color the columns based on which data source they came from. And unlike the union tool where you're just stacking two rows of data on top of each other, with joins, what you're doing is actually adding the number of columns. So you're stacking data side by side. And the relationship that defines that is called the join clause, okay? So the join clause here in this example on the left-hand side is actually the product ID on both sides of the data and the order ID. Those are the unique items between both data sets that allows me to figure out how this works. And so if you look at this flow, what's actually happening is you have all your orders here at the top. And then you have your returns in a separate data source. And the returns are basically cleansed in this bottom step. And using this relationship where we get the re product ID and order ID from our returns table here in purple on the left-hand side, and then we join that to our main data flow, which is here in, in, uh, which is here in yellow. 
And we create this join, which then turns this step into a green output. So again, you have that visual communication here. You have a join clause on your purple and yellow, and that results in this green. And so it's interesting to see here, the result green goes all the way across the top of this join clause, join, join result. And then here you have a mismatch of colors as these bits of information are coming from different tables, okay? Now, if I move on to the next step, which is the join type, depending on the type of relationship you want, there are a concept called left joins, inner join, and right joins. You can get more advanced with full outer joins, but I'll skip that out of this video, okay? Now, in this particular video, a right join is being operated here because it's basically saying that I want to take not just the matching fields between my returns and orders, but also everything in my orders. You see, if I deselected that section, this would now only return only the items that meet the classification of a return in our purple set and an order in our yellow set. So I'd just be analyzing returns and their corresponding orders. If I click on that yellow section, what I'd now be analyzing is every single order as well as any possibility that they might or might not have been returned. You can see that sort of happening here as I click on this. As I click on that, you'll see that this data set here comes from just being returned. And if I click on that again, it just now has nulls and uh, returns as well, now making a much smaller um, sort of proportion of the data. The last thing is I also get a visualization showing me exactly what's going on. So it actually shows me the name of the data sets, okay? Uh, these are the two data sets. So here I have my, re my returns. I have 272 records. And then my orders set, I have 16,301. And what this is telling me is that my data set for returns has three returns that don't have a corresponding order. Okay, that's what this is basically saying. And everything else is actually contained in all my orders. That's why this icon uh, and this square are sort of matching above each other because it's actually telling me that these number of records have matched and these three have been excluded and therefore have not matched. So there's a lot of communication going on here. And then the last thing is the result. Now, depending on the number and what behavior you're expecting to see, the 16,301 is correct. I shouldn't have more records than I had coming in. If I do, then this number will explode. Let me just show you what that actually means in real terms. Let's say I forget to create the relationship between order IDs and I deselect that. What Tableau is now going to do is it's going to try and match every single product ID with every single product ID, and it's going to completely ignore the relationship of the orders, okay? And so I actually end up getting 16,848 rows rather than 16,301. Now, if we think about that for a second, we were only analyzing orders and their returns. So how can I possibly have more records now than I've ever had orders, even if they had a return? And that should be immediately an alarm bell to you. Because this 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 group of these this, this group of records, this here in yellow, I've just clicked on them, and this is essentially the records that don't match or they match, but they've been duplicated because they match multiple times, okay? And so if I go back up to the top and I add that join clause of order ID, I just do this by typing order ID and order ID on the right-hand side, that yellow section now becomes much, much smaller, and I can click on these and actually see what's going on. This is the power of Tableau Prep. I'm doing something really, really advanced here, and I'm seeing the outcome in real time. I'm actually able to see if I'm making mistakes as well, rather than doing something like a VLOOKUP, making a mistake and having to reprocess that VLOOKUP again or manually fiddle the lookup again so that I can try and see what's going on. And last but not least, obviously, you can click on the results and see um, sort of the output, and then that output carries on, okay? So we've covered unions and we've covered joins. Now, 
The key thing is this has been a very, very basic introduction. If you wanted to, you could actually spend half a day learning about unions and joins, especially if you're studying some topics like SQL, where you're working with databases. Uh, these are some of the most fundamental principles that can really make or break your day if you work in business intelligence. Okay, so um, I really encourage you to take a deeper dive into these concepts, really understand the whole range of joins and sort of possibilities of what you can do, uh, and really understand how, how that works for you and your particular business question that you're trying to answer right this is the last video so it would hurt for me to not have shown you how to output a file in tableau prep we haven't actually done that throughout the entire series and so what we now need to do is we've got our flow here we've got a union step we've got a join step here and what i'd like to do is actually add an output so what i'm going to do is just going to click add output and I'm just going to export this as an Excel file. Now, you'll notice here on the bottom left hand side that I've got some output options. I've got a file here. I'm going to try and save it uh, to a specific location in my machine. I'll just zoom back out. I'll go to my desktop and I'll just put it in this untitled folder and I'll hit accept. Now, the default file type is a hyper file. This is the Tableau data format. It's really well optimized. It massively compresses the file. And if you're working in the Tableau platform, it's going to be the fastest way to work with any data that you export from Tableau Prep. However, if you need to open it something like Excel, select the comma separated values option and run the flow. When we run the flow, Tableau actually runs the entire flow from start to finish. And notice it's actually very fast. It's done all of those transformations in four seconds, okay? And if I hit done, it goes back to the view. Now, that's not the only way I can actually run the flow. If I zoom in here, you'll see there's a little play button here on the output option. If I click that, you'll see this new window pop up. And this is because I'm running this for the second time. It's now asking me if I want to overwrite that file. So if I hit replace, it will do exactly the same thing and it will rewrite, rerun the data and it will actually run it a little bit faster. The reason it's a little bit faster is because Tableau is actually caching some of that information. So it's not actually having to run the entire flow from scratch. It's using some of the computations it's already done and just outputting the file a little bit faster. The last place you can run a flow is on the very, very top here. So if you click on this play icon at the top, you'll get the same outcome again. And here you'll see it's outputting it in three seconds. So there's three ways of running a flow. The output option itself, I'll hit cancel. If you click on the output, you've also got this option here on the bottom left to just run the flow. And then at the very top, you've got the ability to run more parts of the flow. Now, if you add another step, let's say we add an output here because I want a copy of my data before it's been duplicated. You'll notice that whenever I add a second step, this play icon gets a drop down menu. So if I go back, you'll see uh, that it loses it, that drop down menu disappears. If I go forward, it reappears. And now if I click on the drop down, and I, I can actually choose to run just one of the outputs. Or I can hit this play icon at the top and it will actually generate both outputs. You can see here that it's got two outputs and it's going along generating rows. And again, it did two files in four seconds, okay? So that's basically it, that's Tableau Prep. If you're coming from Excel, hopefully you'll see that it's a much more flexible tool for doing what you do. If you work on the Tableau platform, this is going to become an invaluable tool in the future for making sure that your data is really, really strong and it's cleansed and ready for you know great visualizations in Tableau. Hopefully you found this series very useful. If you have, drop a comment below, uh, give us some comments, let us know the kind of content you'd like to see. If you'd like some more uh, help with Tableau Prep, let us know what kind of videos you'd like to see. It's a new product, so it's a little bit difficult to cover the new features because they come out extremely fast. So let me know what kind of content you'd like to see for Tableau Prep as time goes on, and hopefully I'll catch you in the next video.